usually in the octave of the Feast of Epiphany. This is a divine manifestation. A few considerations on this. The word Epiphany does mean the divine manifestation, that is, God shows himself. Now, if we look at the world around us, God shows himself in everything. He shows himself in all of creation. All creation is made out of nothing. And he shows himself in that creation. But when God created man, he said, let us create man in our own image and likeness. The man is supposed to be in a special way a divine manifestation. The sun shows forth the heat and light and goodness of God. The dove, the plants, the animals, the minerals, all things show forth the goodness and greatness of God. But man also shows forth the goodness and greatness of God. And when we look at this Feast of Epiphany, the great Feast of Christmas, the Feast of the Divine Manifestation, that God shows himself. You would think that when we consider God showing himself, well, he showed himself especially when there was a Red Sea, and Aaron stood up and held up the staff, and the waters separated, and the muddy bottom became dry, and the Jews walked across the water. And when they got to the other side, Aaron again held up the staff, while Pharaoh's army was in the sea, and God showed himself. And the water destroyed the enemies of God. But in fact, as fathers of the jury tell us, this is no great divine manifestation. For it's very easy for God to separate water, like it is for us to breathe. And it's very easy for God to make the water come back and wipe out the enemies. And don't forget, Nancy Pelosi is now 160 years old, whatever she is, 85. Joe Biden is a couple years younger. And all these wicked men that have won a battle, it seems, in the last few days, why doesn't God show himself? He will. It will not be a special manifestation. It will be this very simple, easy manifestation that he will show to every human being when they die. They will see, face to face, Jesus Christ in his wrath. And they will be cast into the fires of hell, where they will burn forever. We're always supposed to put the caveat, put the little caveat in, which says, if they don't repent. But now is the time to repeat the words of Father Hannafin, my old pastor in Kentucky, when Brezhnev died in 1984. He said, Brezhnev is in hell, and if he's not, he should be. That's the more correct response right now. Biden and, and Harris and uh, Nancy Pelosi, they're going to hell. And if they don't go to hell, they should. They're going to burn in hell for all eternity. They're going to roast forever. And when we look upon them, we shall rejoice seeing them damned. It shall cause joy to the just. But this is not something special. It's just a normal consequence of someone that dies, the enemy of God. There are 7 billion people on earth. There are 20 billion people more or less that have lived since the beginning of time. And every one of them meets God face to face, or not God face to face, but meets Jesus Christ and his humanity, the judge, face to face. And they're all judged by him. And whoever loves him not is damned forever. Whoever loves him is saved forever. Maybe have to spend a short time in purgatory to be purified of the imperfections of that love. Therefore, look at this battle from the perspective of eternity. It isn't special for the damned to be damned, for the just to be saved at the end of their days. What is sacred about the divine manifestation? That God wanted to show himself in our free wills. He wanted to show himself in us. He said, let us make man 
according to our own image and likeness. Let us make man according to our own image and likeness. Man is to imitate me. And how is he going to do that? By sharing goodness, by sharing truth, by expressing it in the world around us. On this Feast of Epiphany, in this octave between January the 6th and the 13th, we consider especially three manifestations where God showed himself. And it's not the miracle of the Red Sea, it's not the miracle of the resurrection, it's not the great miracles of God that are sown on the outside, but the miracles that happen in human hearts. So that God showed himself when he was born, because three pagan kings, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar, Balthazar the king, and Caspar the king, and, Mel and, the, and then the, 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 the uh, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar the king, the three kings, these kings came to give gifts to the king of kings when the world was not ready to give him gifts, when his own people didn't pay attention to his birth, when it was neglected at his own childhood, the star was prophesied about a thousand years before he was born. And these three kings were sons, grandsons, of that great, of that wicked man who prophesied the star, Balaam. Balaam, by the power of God, prophesied the star, even though he didn't ever convert it himself. And his children knew about the star, and they waited for the star that Balaam didn't care about. And the Jews knew about the star. It was written in their scriptures, and they didn't care about it. But three kings who were not of the Jewish people, who were not the descendants of Abraham, he saw that star, and they said, we must bring gifts. God showed himself in the heart of Caspar and Melchior and Balthazar. He showed himself in their hearts because they brought gold to give to the king, and they brought frankincense to give to the king and to the God, to God, and they brought myrrh to give to the Redeemer. And they brought these gifts, and they saw the child and in that little child, who was not in the castle, who was not being honored when they arrived, they saw God, and they manifested their adoration of Him in those circumstances, and that is a miracle greater than the miracle of the Red Sea. The miracle by which God moved the heart of three kings, who was great, 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 great grandfather, who was a wicked man named Balaam, who did not repent before he died, so far as we know. And he prophesied the star, and they believed in the star. And God is manifested in the hearts of three pagan kings. He's even manifested in the heart of Herod, the wicked king. Because Herod, who hates God, Herod, who is the enemy of God, he recognized the king of kings is here and he is a threat to me. The king of kings is here and he is a threat to me, and therefore I decree that he must be put to death. Herod recognized the king and he made the very first decree about Jesus Christ, which is he must be put to death because he is a king, because the king has shown himself in a cave in Bethlehem, the king has shown himself in our region, and the king is a threat to the enemies of God. Herod recognized the king, and Herod decreed his death. And all the things that happened were because of the recognition of the king. Joseph had to flee in the night. There were 500 boys that were martyred and became saints. There were three kings that went to speak to Herod. Now what did they see in Herod? What did Herod say? Where is this king to be born? I want you, three kings, to go to find him. And when you find him, 
come back to me and tell me where he is so that I might go and I might adore him. So Herod lied to them. What did he tell them? I want to adore the king also. But right now I'm busy. Right now I have other things to do. But you came to look for him, so why don't you go and find him? And when you have found him, come back to me. <clears throat> Tell me where he is, and I will go and adore him. And here we here you see one of the mysteries of the apostolic life. The three kings believed Herod. And they went to see the child. And they said, now we've seen the child. Let's go back and tell the king where the child is. But an angel appeared to them and said, do not tell the king where the child is. Don't tell him. But go back another way. Why do they go back another way? Because Herod was a liar. And Herod was a pig. And Herod was a murderer. And Herod now burns in hell. And Herod had hell in his heart and hell in his mind on that day. He lived by lies and wickedness. He murdered his own mother by his own hands. He was a most wicked man. What did he do? He said, these three kings may not come back because I think that everybody's a liar. Liars believe everyone's a liar. Liars believe everyone deceived. <coughs> so I'm going to tell these three kings to go. But just in case, we're putting spies and guards along the path that they came. So that when the three kings come back, we will capture them. We will kill them. And then we will find out where the child was born and we will kill the child. They will come back by the same way that they entered into this land. But what is the last word of the gospel of the Feast of Epiphany? Per aliam viam. Per aliam viam. They returned through another way. The angel appeared to them in the night and said, Do not go back by the road you came. You cannot go back by the road you came. You came to manifest your heart and mind to the king. You came to see God and the king, and now you cannot return by the road that you came. But per aliam viam, through another way, return to your own country. And so they returned by another way. They did not return by the way in which they came. <clears throat> they must return another way. <clears throat> and so they went another way. We must recognize when we meet Jesus Christ, when we meet God, no matter what path we came from, <clears throat> we will never be able to return by that same path. As St. Basil says, we all meet Jesus Christ in the crowd. But we leave either by another way and go the narrow way to heaven, or we leave and join the mob. Well, the mob demands his death, and the other way follows him to the Mount of Calvary, to the Mount of the Beatitudes, and the Mount of Heaven, the Mount of the Ascension. We meet him in the crowd. Can we go back to the crowd to St. Basil? We cannot go back to the crowd. Either we become part of the mob, or we go by another way. The angel appeared and said, return by another way. And Christ is manifested by the three pagan kings. And then <clears throat> they were filled with Christ, and they became the first Catholics. Then what happened? We consider the second manifestation in the Feast of Epiphany, which is St. John the Baptist. But St. John the Baptist saw Jesus Christ and baptized him. Now remember, when our Lord Jesus Christ came into that crowd, 
He lined up in line with all the other people to be baptized by St. John the Baptist. He did not say that he was the Christ. He did not show in any way that he was the Christ, God, and the Messiah. And the last time that St. John the Baptist saw him was when three months before he was born. And he did not see him, but he only heard the voice of the Mother of God. That was the last contact that St. John the Baptist had with Jesus Christ 30 years earlier when he was in the womb of his mother. Now that Jesus Christ comes in the crowd, he comes down to the water to be baptized, and St. John the Baptist immediately recognizes him. The three kings recognized Christ because they believed in prophecy. That was their way. But St. John the Baptist, who was a prophet himself, he believed and recognized Jesus Christ because he spent 30 years in the desert praying. He spent 30 years in the desert doing penance. <clears throat> he spent 30 years in the desert contemplating the Word of God. The three kings had only a prophecy from a long time ago. But St. John the Baptist, who was a prophet, needed much more. 30 years of prayer and preparation, 30 years of contemplation of the things of God, and then he was driven by the Spirit out in the desert to preach about the Jesus Christ to come. And then our Lord Jesus Christ came to be baptized. And what did St. John the Baptist do? I am not worthy to baptize you, but thou must baptize me. Consider the great prophet that would come after him. What would he say? Simon, who would become St. Peter, would say to our Lord Jesus Christ, when he discovered the miracle of the, of the fish, catching the many fish, the first miracle to catch of many fish, depart from me because I am a sinful man. I'm not worthy to be your follower. I will make you a fisher of men. And St. John the Baptist <laughs> says, you are the one that should baptize me. I am not the one that should baptize you. And because of St. John the Baptist, what happened? There was a divine manifestation. Because St. John the Baptist obeyed Jesus Christ, and the Lord Jesus Christ said, No, you must baptize me as you baptize the others. And in obedience, without understanding, St. John picked up the water and he poured it over the head of our Lord Jesus Christ and said, I baptize thee in the baptism of penance. And then there came a voice from heaven that all could hear. This voice would not have come had St. John the Baptist not spent 30 years of preparation, had he not recognized our Lord Jesus Christ, had he not said the right thing in spirit to him and showed forth God in his heart and showed forth God in his obedience, then the voice came from heaven that everyone could hear and said, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. And he began his public ministry. God the Father announced it in this divine manifestation. Hear ye him. And so the Lord Jesus Christ was manifested in human flesh. Manifested by St. John the Baptist. Manifested by the three kings. <laughs> and manifested by the voice from heaven. It came just after St. John the Baptist showed forth his love of the king. <laughs> there must be a manifestation of Christ and manifestation of God in every age of human history. The great miracle is that our human hearts of each age, that there will be some human hearts of every age and some human tongues of every age, that shall show forth God, that shall preach God, that shall come from a pagan background like the three kings and believe in God and give him gifts coming from afar. And those who are the great prophets shall manifest God. And then of course the shepherds who were simply watching their sheep. All they were doing was watching their sheep and they will have angels appear to them. The shepherds hear the angel. And then they go and find Christ and speak of it. 
St. John the Baptist sees Christ and recognizes because of his great prophecy powers as a true great prophet who recognized him and then God spoke that all could hear this is my beloved son hear ye him he wants to be manifested to show forth himself in our human flesh <clears throat> and this must be done in all ages including our age and that's our primary duty as human beings carry on the faith from one generation to the next and manifest and show forth God in our age, amongst our people, in our families, in our workplace, in our times. God shall have his victory over these wicked ones who shall burn in hell. There's nothing special about that. But what is special is that our hearts, not seeing everything perfectly, but loving completely, and our tongues, not understanding everything perfectly, but loving and speaking with great faith, will be able to manifest the words and the truth of God in every age, including our own. There shall not be at any age the stopping of the communication of the divine truth, the divine love, the divine goodness. It shall never be stopped. And so we must manifest God in our own age as it manifested before. <laughs> And so we wish you the Grammy Feast, this octave of the three kings of Epiphany. God bless you all then, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.